I'm going to lift it out with my trusty old Avant compact loader. It's a great piece of machinery. I do think my glow plugs are getting a bit tired because it doesn't matter how long how long I preheat for. It does not want to start and today it's only like two or three minus Celsius. That's not too bad. So a little bit of gas. Let's go again. Heat it. As you can see as well, I'm working in a dump. It looks terrible in here. So I'm going to take the beam out, take this other beam on the other side on the underside out. Uh, Alright, that's it. I use it, uh, used the sandpaper for the angle grinder for these services here to get them a little smoother because that's where the wheel, the, to get these surfaces a little smoother because that is where the bearings are going to roll. And also, I did it on top here because it was so pitted so it looked a little better. And then I wire wheeled everything, I welded it. Uh, looks all right. I drilled one more hole in each plate for uh, the second set of bearings. All right, so three on each side. Worst case scenario, probably around 100 kilos per bearing. So uh, it feels all right. At least now, if one breaks, I'll have two more instead of just one left. That feels a lot better. So I'm going to put up the second rail in the roof and then I'm going to put this into place and uh, try it out. Let's see how it works. All right, so this is the plan. As you can see here, I've drilled holes in the angle iron every 40 centimeters. One there and one there and so on. And then I'm going to, it's going to attach like this into the beam in the roof. And then I have every other like this bolt that goes through with the washer and the nut and every other wooden screw. And that's because I don't feel like drilling all these holes. And I think this will be strong enough. If I feel like it's a little bit sketchy, I'll just unscrew them, drill a hole and uh, get more of these bolts that I can bolt them straight through. So that's the plan. So I'm going to try to put it up. It's quite heavy. So I use uh, another set of wooden screws, screw them into the beam so I can lift the angle iron on top of it and then keep on going from there. So let's try it and see how it works out. One thing that is quite impressive really is that this barn was built almost a hundred years ago. And when I measure the two beams that I'm going to put this uh, bridge crane up on, they are offset by dead on the millimeter all the way so the wooden beam is straight on both sides both sides and they got them to match within a millimeter a hundred years ago more than a hundred years ago 1918 this was built and uh, so these wooden screws are just put up so i have something to rest the angle iron on so i don't have to Hold it because it is quite heavy. <laughs> uh, 
I think that was the right. Yep. You see this pillar here? The end of the rails stop there because it can't go any further. So I'm also ma making a couple of wooden stops here. So I can't roll it off. That looks good. Okay, so on this end we have two more holes, one wooden screw there and one the through bolt there. And this is, I have to lift this eight millimeters. And on this hole, I have to lift it two millimeters. So I'll put my floor jack with a scrap piece of angle iron on here, jack it up, screw it when this is dead on. And when this is dead on, I'm going to drill it. Alright, so the plan here is to lift the beam up onto the IBC tote and then lift the whole IBC tote up into to the roof because I can't lift high enough. This is quite a sketchy lift and it is a little bit of snow on the IBC tote but I want it to be there because it slides easily Good, good, good. Now I want to measure it so it's in between. I only have like five millimeters on each side, so I don't have that much to play on. 108 and a half. Like 92 or something. loader on this is not self-leveling so I have to adjust the angle of the forks by the time every time I lift it a little bit like five millimeters in this end. I hope I haven't measured it wrong. 
That would suck. Maybe it's just... Oh yeah, it's a little... This would be a tight fit, guys. If it will fit in the first place. <laughs> Doesn't look one bit sketchy either. Looks all right. All right, so before I started this project, I made a little uh, drawing of uh, how everything was going to sit together. As you can see here, here we have the steel plate for uh, the side of the beams. Uh, you have an M12 bolt there and one there. Here is the long M12 nut, which I turned down to fit the roller bearing. This is the roller bearing. Here is the 60 by 60 angle iron bolted to the wooden uh, beam in the roof. And this was the measurements that I started with when I cut the beam. And because I cut the beam 10 millimeters too short, everything on this, this plate turned out to end five millimeters in here. So I have to cut this back five millimeters and everything moved in to about here. And this, this is the scale of one to 500. It doesn't say that very much, but uh, this, the bolt's head here is 12 millimeters. So this distance here is about 10 millimeters. And uh, the carriage bolt that I used to uh, bolt the angle iron to the wooden beams uh, only stick about, out about four millimeters. Uh, so initially I had plenty of room between the head of this bolt and the, the carriage bolt that's in the angle iron. Uh, one thing I didn't consider was that I needed a washer here to keep the uh, roller bearing uh, mounted to the extended the nut. So that uh, moved the head of the bolt out two millimeters and uh, ev because this everything here moved in five, this bolt is now seven millimeters closer to the angle iron and this sticks out four. So I have negative one millimeter in clearance here. The initial plan as well was to use a set of wheels bolted to the steel plate that rolled on the wooden beams. Uh, I ditched that idea. Uh, I did, never bought anything for it. And uh, I came up with an other plan. And uh, that is this. Uh, this is not exactly according to scale on the width of it, but uh, everything else is. I drew this fast just to see how everything turned out. As you can see here, I did a measurement. It's negative one millimeter down here. And this is the steel plate. That's mounted to the, uh, that's welded to the beam. And I thought that if I had two more roller bearings out here, here and here, they can roll on the edge of the angle iron to keep the distance correct. Because here is the edge of the angle iron, it's hard to see on the camera, but here is the edge of the angle iron and here is the edge of this, the steel plate that's welded to the beam and it's only about, Maybe two millimeters now when I cut everything back. All right, so I already marked everything. Uh, I used other pieces as a reference and used the same measurements for the holes. So I center punched uh, back on each side. Give it a little starter hole using a step bit. Uh, it's nice and fast to, to use. A little bit of uh, lubrication. And these holes will be 10 millimeters because the center of the bearing is 10 millimeters and there will be M10 bolts going through here, holding the bearing in place. The nice thing about using a step bit is that uh, you get a nice little chamfered edge because uh, it starts to drill in on the next step. It's two in one. Right, so that's the 10 millimeter holes. Uh, on this side, I haven't uh, marked everything up just yet. Um, doing this, this is probably going to be one of a kind. I can't really 
show anyone the blueprints or I can show them just a general idea of how I thought about everything. So giving you the measurements doesn't really help you if you want to do something like this yourselves. Right, that's uh, them two pieces done. As you can see here, I went one step too far on my step drill, so that's a 10 millimeter hole instead of an eight millimeter. It will do its job anyways, so uh, don't worry too much about it. Uh, yeah, so bolts through there, bearings in the slots. Yeah, I think this will uh, work out just fine. I bought a little bit too long bolts for it and that's one good reason for that because uh, the next step shorter and you got the threaded end on where the bearings is going to be seated on so i bought longer ones and the washer on both both sides and the then the bearings will be on this uh, flat surface the smooth surface All right, so as you can see there, the bearing is just barely sticking out. And uh, that's actually the way I wanted it to be because the distance between what I cut here and the edge of the uh, this smaller tube is uh, 10 millimeters. And that's the thickness of the plate. So only sticking out by one or two millimeters. It's just the way I, it's just what I want. So it's only one thing left to do and that's to drill and tap holes in the uh, in the beam so that
bolts on these. I have to turn them down like three or four millimeters. They're not really that much much tension on them. I don't want to dare to keep the bearing from rolling off. I'm using these extended nuts and in order to get the bearings on them I'm turning down one side and I'm also making them a little shorter. This is the finished product or whatever you want to call it. So quick time lapse to show you guys. I'm now master at using my lathe but I, I like the process. Yeah. 